So I think through decentralization of the web, we're going to see different ways that that value is returned back to the user, be it in um, privacy, control of their data, or um, the way that they generate their you know, income in the world. Hi guys, welcome to the new episode of Blockchain Beyond Hype. Today we're talking with Patricia Parkinson from Block Collab about how the blockchain technology is changing the internet as we know it. So we're here today with Patricia. Welcome to Blockchain Zoo. We're excited to have you here to discuss your thoughts on the internet versus blockchain and how the te blockchain technology is changing the web as we know it. So since the boom of dot com more than 20 years ago, all industries have changed the way they operate and serve customers. Based on that, changes provided by blockchain technology are expected to be as massive. Is it the reason why you have started working on several projects using this technology? I absolutely believe that blockchain is going to be that massive. Um, I'm of this kind of bridging generation that had the internet really young. I've had computers since three, internet since 10. So I had analog experience and internet experience and also had a critical eye because of that. And as I got older, I started questioning the internet that became our normal and started looking for answers on um, what was working, what wasn't. And when I found the original version and design of the internet from Ted Nelson in the 70s, um, I spent a couple of years traveling the world trying to figure out how I can contribute to making that our, our reality with the internet. It wasn't until I realized that blockchain bridges the digital and the physical world and understood those intricacies that I went, okay, this is where I can make a contribution to making that our future. Okay. So you help teams build innovative digital experiences. So the projects you work on are at the intersection of design, technology, and entrepreneurship. What does it take for you to unleash this creative potential of teams you work with? Yeah, I think that um, regardless of the specific project, there's three kind of ingredients that goes into play for people feeling empowered creatively. Um, the first is choosing a team that is purpose aligned. Um, the second is making sure that there's clarity on the vision at hand and that there's buy-in from the team on that vision. Um, and then lastly, um, creating healthy creative boundaries so that people feel empowered to um, iterate and experiment within that process and work autonomously within it as well. Okay. Um, one of the blockchain's missions is to re-decentralize the internet. It's hard to believe, but like you said, the internet was decentralized a while ago. When launching a website, you had to buy a server and host your website on your own. Now, we use centralized hosting services and other services from corporations like Twitter, Facebook, Google. Do you see the decentralization as the main change blockchain will bring into our lives? Yeah, I think decentralization is part of it, but at a more human level, it's going to change the way that we cooperate with one another. It's going to help us align incentives. It's going to improve transparency and accountability between um, different parties. Um, I think that decentralization is important, but what people actually want is accountability. And I don't think full decentralization is always the answer to get there. Okay. So internet is built on um, open source protocols, such as TC or IP, HTTP, or SMTP. Understanding simple mail transfer protocol was a must to send an email in the past. Today, it's enough to be able to operate with Outlook or Gmail to do it. These services popularized the internet by making emailing very convenient, but they also centralized it by growing large. How will bringing back decentralized functionality look like? Yeah, I think one example we're already seeing on the blockchain called EOS, which is um, you can use your username to send email to people rather than having a specific email address. So we're seeing this with services like Dmail. I think it's also interesting that we'll have a central source for saving things like email um, on the blockchain, but then many different explorers that have different user experiences and interfaces on top of that. So you can choose the type of uh, interactions that you want to have um, to the same data that you can have access to in all those different services. Okay. Um, 1990s was an important era for the internet when the mass adoption wave came after more than 20 years since its creation. Minding all of that, when will mass adoption happen for the blockchain technology in your opinion? Yeah, I think that there's um, three key things that can happen to help encourage mass adoption. Um, the first and most important is we need to design experiences that are as good, if not better, than what we're familiar with on the web right, right now. 
Uh, in a lot of cases, people won't even know that their services are running on blockchain. Um, the second is we need to make it convenient for people to use it in their everyday life. And I think a big part of that is the way that we currently look at money is digital, which is point of sale devices when we're using credit cards. We need to have those devices also accept cryptocurrencies natively. Um, then sadly, but kind of true is the, the third one, um, when the next inevitable financial crisis happens, um, this is the first time that something like cryptocurrency will be available. It didn't exist in 2008. And I think people will look at it as a realistic option to protect their wealth that they didn't have before. So after the internet will become decentralized again, the power will go back to the users. That will drastically change content creation, distribution, and incentivization, but also censorship. Let's imagine my archaeological expedition discovered artifacts which do not match the regular view of history and mankind. It is a revolutionary discovery. How do you see the usage of blockchain in content distribution will enhance the process of spreading controversial news? Yeah, I think we're already seeing this happen. I think that because um, blockchain creates a permanent source um, to save information like this that is being leveraged for um, controversial information. A couple months ago, there was a 9-11 hacker who was releasing controversial documents on the blockchain Steam. Um, they, you're not able to ever censor it from the core blockchain level, but at an explore level, they can hide that it exists. So if the people knew where to go, can always find it. Mm -hmm. um, we're also seeing this on sites like Everpedia, um, where anyone can submit an edit to any piece of content. Of course, there's community moderation involved and whether or not that gets accepted by the community um, as an official publication, but there'll always be the record that it was submitted. So we're going to have um, no true source necessarily, but also no ability to really censor this type of information. Okay. Um, those concepts are embraced by one of the projects you work at, Everypedia, which you did mention, which is the evolutionary stage of Wikipedia. How do these two platforms differ? Yeah, um, Wikipedia has kind of two camps that are kind of considered to be inclusionists, which is like put as much as there as possible, and deletionists. Let's be really tight about what goes on to Wikipedia. And um, this is starting to cause a little bit of problems where there's a gap, which is called kind of the Goldilocks zone, between what is considered notable enough to go on Wikipedia and what people are searching for um, on the internet and find interesting. And that's where Everpedia comes in to disrupt that space. It's the new Wikipedia for up and coming things in culture. Okay. Um, social media will be even less manageable. Do you think we are ready for it? I think that might actually become more manageable. I don't know okay. if you've ever tried to contact, um, you know, like Facebook's community moderation teams, no. but it's near impossible. Um, so what we'll have popping up is community moderation and also mm -hmm. algorithms that have the content that's most relevant to us and highest quality kind of float to the surface um, and not be kind of forced within um, what Facebook considers to be their own algorithm. You can choose different explorers based on the experience that you want. Maybe it's only for sound clips. Maybe it's um, optimized for really beautiful high quality images. Uh, I think that we're going to be able to have better experiences through that. Um, but also, and more importantly, we're going to be able to be paid for the value of our content through social media. So it's no longer going to be the nice, warm, fuzzy feeling for thumbs ups and comments. It's going to be money in our wallets. Yeah. So it looks like the main shift is in the way how humanity will interact and collaborate. Um, no surprise there. Technology is just a tool. What other collaborative mechanics of interaction powered by the blockchain can you see in practice? I'm most excited about the opportunities um, through blockchain to collaborate better with one another. And we're seeing um, examples of this already pop up in the early days of EOS. Um, we have referendum systems currently in use, um, signaling to the block producers on the sentiment of the community. Um, we're having uh, new types of um, shared ownership pop up through DAX, like decentralized um, organizations um, appear. Um, and most of all, I think that people that are um, gravitating towards the blockchain space versus, versus the cryptocurrency space mm -hmm. are having more open dialogues about our ideologies, beliefs, and philosophies, um, and then we'll be able to congregate in communities where we have that kind of as a core driving force. And from that place, we can accomplish a lot more than we could before. Right. Blocklab.io and Deco.network present a new way of managing the cooperation of individuals. Could you tell us more about it? Yeah, um, Block Collab is what we're calling a collaboratory. It's a group of people that are working on the fringe of the new world of work. Um, what we're doing is exploring the trends of um, moving from institutionalized structures to network structures, um, from being siloed in an organization to being cross-disciplinary, and things like from um, having fixed time that you work to fluid schedules. Um, so we're both showing up in these ways in the way that we work, as well as um, working on projects that are enhancing and encouraging that to exist in the world. 
Uh, whereas DecoNet is focusing more on reducing the, the friction that happens sometimes in collaboration. Um, the two kind of points that we're tracking this from is one, um, the aligning of incentives between collaborators and making uh, payments easier and faster. Okay. If you had to list the three soonest changes or consequences which blockchain and redecentralization of the internet will bring to the business world, what would they be? I, I think that three things that are going to shift is one is around financial freedom. Um, we're going to have investment options that weren't open to everyone previously. We're also going to have abilities to protect our wealth and to generate passive income um, through a variety of different um, online activities. Um, my favorite is the idea um, that you don't pay to play. You, if you play and, and get paid in terms of gaming, I think that's the first one that we're going to see is for mass adoption. Um, the second is I think we're going to see people having more open dialogues around our ideologies and why decentralization um, and this type of accountability and transparency is important to us. And I think the third thing that's going to change is helping um, this gray territory that exists between people that are independent contractors and not necessarily um, corporations, but are hiring subcontractors. We're going to give people the ability to work collaboratively on large projects without having to run through those uh, regulatory hoops. Well, this has been very interesting. Thank you for telling us about blockchain versus the internet. We do like to ask all of our guests, how do you envision decentralization and blockchain changing the world? I think that for a long time, um, the value that's been created by people on the internet has been captured by centralized, um, you know, with Jaron Lanier and um, who owns the who owns the future, his book calls siren servers, and that people on the other side of that haven't had um, their contributions on the internet properly returned back to them. So I think through decentralization of the web, we're going to see different ways that that value is returned back to the user, be it in um, privacy control of their data or um, the way that they generate their you know, income in the world. And how do you think the market for blockchain-based solutions will evolve? I think we're first going to see the word blockchain being used a lot less, especially to promote a product. Um, blockchain will kind of underpin the solutions being possible and as effective and efficient as they are, um, but the everyday consumer doesn't really need to know that. Um, I also think that um, we're going to see, uh, as we're already seeing on EOS actually in the last couple of weeks, um, the ability to run applications being cheaper and more effective on blockchain solutions than on traditional servers, which is really exciting. Um, the last is I think we're going to start seeing pr uh, services pop up where users are paid to use the service and don't have to pay to use the service. Okay. Well, this has been fascinating. Thank you again for coming to speak with us at Blockchain Zoo about the way that blockchain technology can decentralize the web again. Thank you for watching, guys. We at Blockchain Zoo are excited to bring you our new guest on our next episode.